I'll introduce myself. I will uh, say a little bit about uh, the company Exeter, and then we'll jump right into personnel certification. So let's go ahead and get this webinar started. Hello, uh, today's webinar is going to be on personnel certification, going for the gold in the new year. Now, when we get this webinar started, if you have any questions, uh, locate the question tab on your dash, and uh, please feel free, ask away, ask any questions you'd like. There's no bad questions, there's, there's always great questions, and uh, I'd be more than happy to help you. I got my email address on this first page and also at the end of the presentation so that you can always send me an email after the fact if you think of anything at all. Thank you again for attending. My name, is, like I said, is Ted Stewart. I'm a CFSP. I am the Program Development and Compliance Manager here at Exeter. Uh, a lot of my exp expertise is in safety and high availability um, automation systems, manufacturing and lean process improvement. Uh, previously, I've worked with uh, Lockheed Martin as a test engineer. I then moved over to Harris Corporation uh, for WPG, Wireless Product Groups, where I was there. I was introduced into management and uh, was a new product introduction type manager. Now here at Exeter, uh, moving from Florida to Pennsylvania, I am now the OEM certification division. I help manage that. I wear a lot of different hats where I am the deputy quality manager and I'm also the director of this CFSC program. Who we are, Exeter. Well, we were founded in 1999 by several of the world's top reliability and safety experts uh, around the world. And uh, as you can see there, I am located in the Sellerville, Pennsylvania uh, corporate office or other corporate offices in Germany. And I feel like every year uh, a, a new dot is starting to pop up. So it's very exciting for us. Exida is involved with the complete supply chain of functional safety in many multiple industry sectors. From the original equipment manufacturers who require product certification through to the end users that use the products. Exeter provides software tools, training, consulting, and procedures related to functional safety, security, and reliability. And you can see here in front of you um, the different areas that we um, help and do business in. You'll also see that we do have six, we like to call them six divisions, six suite of services and products that we can uh, apply to you, whether it's consulting, engineering tools, product certification, training, uh, reference materials, and, and then, of course, we're going to talk today about the professional certification. Uh, one quick slide on each one of those engineering consulting services you can see here. Uh, three of the main bullet point items are functional safety, process safety, um, alarm management, and, of course, cybersecurity. As far as engineering tools are concerned, are probably my favorite. I'm learning to be my favorite. And it's, you know, once you start getting yourself into the equations and trying to figure out how you can find and use your time more efficiently, it's always nice to have software to do it for you. Extra certification, this is one of the main areas that I work in. We are one of the, the leaders in this uh, division, which is great. We do certifications in 61508, 61511. And automotive, which is 26262. We do certification in cybersecurity, machine safety. The list goes on. And uh, I like I like saying that you know we do strive to operate the most useful and relevant product certification program in the world. Uh, we do this day in and day out, and it's a lot of fun actually. So today, personnel certification, going for the gold, the the gold standard of CFSC. Uh, but let's talk about let's talk about um, really you know. Why we're all here today? Well, for me personally, you know, I was going through my LinkedIn news feed, and I ran across this article. Now, this article was by uh, Brett Hagler. He's the CEO, co-founder uh, at News Story, and the title of this article was called "Because of 4 A.M." Now, this, of course, immediately caught my attention. Uh, one, because it was a catchy title, and two, you know, starting with the new year, I'm always trying to think of how I can improve. From the previous year, you know, what can I do a little bit different? How can I get myself ahead uh, and advance my career? Well, you know, being that individual that I am, I, you know, because I want to improve and be better, I don't only want to be a better husband, I don't only want to be a better friend, an employee, but I want to improve myself as a whole. Now, reading this article, it made me realize, you know, how do you how do you get from good to great? And it made me realize that I wanted to go for gold, but in everything I do. Now, in this article. Kobe Bryant, the man pictured on the screen, he was on stage accepting the Iron Award at the ESPYs. 
He was addressing fellow athletes and said, we're not on this stage just because of our talent or ability. We're up here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two-a-days or five-a-days. We're up here because we had a dream and let nothing stand in our way. If anything tried to bring us down, we used it to make us strong, end quote. Now, as Brett Hagler said in his article, now, but I'm going to use the context of, you know, our industry. You know, there are thousands of employees in oil and gas uh, and in nuclear, functional safety, or any industry for that matter, that are just as talented or even more talented than yourself or myself. But at the end of the day, it doesn't come down to who has the most talent or intelligence. It comes down to who is willing to make the choices that others are not willing to make. Who is willing to come in early or stay late to do that one extra item you normally would have just held off doing until tomorrow? You know, who is willing to practice and practice and become the best in your industry? That is why I feel you are on this webinar today. You are already filtered yourself from those other people that said, you know, it's, it's just another extra webinar. They record these things anyways. You know, I'll just, I'll just catch it when they put it on YouTube. You know, I sign up for these things because then I can get the slides anyways. So ask yourself, what is your 4 a.m.? It doesn't mean you have to, you don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. for goodness sakes. It just means what are you going to do to separate yourself from the pack? Now also remember, it's okay if you're not ready to dream big. And you know, the bet is always welcoming you. Those extra nine minutes when you hit the snooze button are pretty tempting anyways. <laughs> no, but remember, it's so easy to do the small things that will eventually separate you from your peers and it will elevate you in your career. And it's also very easy, let's flip that, not to do those small things and become comfortable at your job. And before you know it, in five to 10 years from now, you're probably gonna be the same exact place you are today. So today though, it's a new day. Today we're talking about going for gold. And today I will present you, for you, ways that you can become stronger, safer, more reliable as an ind individual employee in our industry. Now what you see in front of you, this is how we're going to start. We're going to say, you know, going for gold and personnel certification, there's three different tiers of competency. We'll start at the bottom. We'll call it tier one. That's the certificate level. For example, the, and I'll go into more details on the different types of programs that are available to you. And then you can ask questions as to what's right for you. And I'll, I'll have more, no problem helping you uh, figure that out. So the first tier is the certificate level. Uh, here at Exeter, you know, because I know most about Exeter, I work for Exeter, uh, we have, there's something called FSP, a functional safety practitioner, right? You also have other variations of a certificate program. And basically what a certificate program does, it addresses the need to provide confirmation that attendees showed competency by retaining knowledge presented in a course. And of course, requirements are similar to other certificate programs. If you go to tier two, you're going to look at the CFSP. And then tier three is the gold standard, is which is your CFSC. And like I said, we'll go into more detail, but I love the visual aspect of things, so I had to put a picture up. Certificate or certification, right? Let's look at the right side. Let's talk about a certificate process, a certificate organization. Now, the results of a certificate uh, exam is from an educational process. What that means is you're going to take a, an exam, based off a of training you just learned. You know, it's for those newcomers. And it's also could be for those experienced professionals that just want something fresh. You want to freshen up, and I want to kind of see what's out there, see how the trainings have progressed, right? Uh, it's It indicates completion of a course. You'll look at here, the course content is determined by that provider or that institution. Usually certificate programs are not standardized, okay? So no matter where you take this, depending on who you take it with, you could have different information presented to you for a same course title. All right, and I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up as well. Um, usually, you can list this on a resume detailing your education, saying that you have a certificate program, uh, that you you know you pass the exam, you're competent. Let's switch over to the certification because this is when things start getting you to go for gold. This is when people start looking at you as a mentor, as a leader in the in the industry. This is when, you know, if your boss ever knocks on your door and say, you know, hey Ted, I want you to be the next functional safety expert. Do you even know what SIL means? 
<laughs> you'll probably look at them like, huh? I don't, I don't know, silly. That means you want to do the certificate route. <laughs> but uh, if you're doing the certification, that's where you need to be. If someone's going to come to you and say, look, I need you to be the expert. I need you to start helping us understand how we can improve our, our, our control system. How can we improve our, our plant? What can we do even as a manufacturer? Please help us. You know, and, and, and it's a very critical role. It's now becoming one that you actually can apply for, and you need to be a CFSC or CFSP to actually get the job. So it's becoming more and more of a need, and so we need to bring the awareness, let people know the difference between these programs because they're getting confused. Uh, and that's where uh, the certificate and the certification program come into play. Here are the different programs. Many different industries have their own programs. All, I, all I'm going to tell you is they're all great, and some of them aren't so great. It's up to you to do your homework to decide which ones you feel are going to be the most beneficial. You know, ask, ask your colleague, ask your neighbor, ask those people maybe that have already taken trainings and see how they thought. Go on the LinkedIn boards, look at discussions, see how people respond to the different organizations that are out there and see if you like it. If you like it, great. Go take it and see how you like it personally. Now, let's look here. I'm just going to hit slides real quick. So you can see the difference between a certificate program and a certification. Let's talk about the blue circle first. So the blue area are those are the programs that are now um, certificate programs, right? So whether you want to be an ISA 84 expert, if you want to be an FS expert, an FS eng, uh, a functional safety expert, functional safety professional, with TV soot or with Exida, you can be a functional safety practitioner, uh, fire and gas, or you can do it in uh, cybersecurity, right? So there's many different certificate programs. Now, why do I say, well, you know, hey Ted, why are you calling those all certificate programs when I'm I'm certified? Well, by uh, IEC 17024, uh, the standard on uh, personnel certification, in order for it to become a certif certification, a training cannot be required. And that's just real easy. I mean, there's more requirements than that. But just to keep things and break it down real simple, a certificate program is one that requires a training. So if, if somebody is looking into bettering themselves and you want to take a training course, if that training course is required, you know, hey, look, this is a certificate program. If I'm new, this is right up my alley. Even if I'm experienced, this is still up my alley if I need a refresher, let's say, because I'm thinking about be taking that and even going for that goal and, and wanting to go for a CFC or cybersecurity. It's called a CACE. Uh, but I want to be better. Uh, but I do want to take a refresher anyways. And that's perfectly fine because I love certificate programs because it's that benchmark to let you know what are, what are you excelling in? What do you still need to work on? And uh, prior to you taking this huge test, it's nice to know where you stand and where you should study prior to taking the exam to have your best chance. Oh, one other thing I did talk about. Let's going back into the certificate programs because I did want to touch that they're not even certificate programs aren't created equal. I touched on it a little bit before. So when you when I say do your homework, you really do need to do your homework. Uh, another thing that you'll see is that the actual content, the training content. Uh, so on this slide, you'll see yeah, you see training provider, right? So make sure the training provider uh, is what you want. So for me, how I like it is I like something that's standardized. I like something to say, hey, look, if I went and took this training class in Asia, if I went and took it in England, if I went and took it in the United States, it's the same training course and we're all getting that same exam. Why do I like consistency and standardization is because then I have a, I have a bar that I can meet. So if I pass in the United States, uh, my great friend in, uh, in, in England and he passed it, hey, guess what? We both passed the same exam. Be careful because some of these certificate programs don't really care about that. They say, hey, look, Professor X, Professor Y, put your material together. As long as you guys feel it's great, go ahead and, oh, by the way, create your own exams too so that at the end of it you can, you can judge people whether they uh, understood your material or not. So here's what happens there is if I take it in different areas of the world with different instructors, I could take it. I could take it here. I could take it there. And those, were, those could be two different classes completely. One could be great, one could be not so great. So like I said, do your homework. As long as you have referrals and references of people that enjoy the class and it's what you're looking for, by all means, thumbs up, go ahead and take it. So where do you fit in? All right, we did talk about this a little bit. Uh, the certificate program is definitely your first step, whether you want 
and, and, and my, keep in mind you don't have to go and take a training course on a generic topic, right? So you don't have to become a for you know for what's on my screen an FSP, which is a functional safety practitioner. Say your industry um, is in fire and gas, right? Go take a fire and gas a certificate program, um, and, and and do something where you will excel in. Right, and, and then once you once you take that and you understand everything, then you can fit it in and saying, okay, now I really want to now I want to take it serious. Now I want to go for gold. Now I want to become and get in a certification group where um, I can now be looked upon as a mentor. And I can this is one huge step that now I can separate myself from the rest in this in this organization. It's because remember, this is already a niche market. So if you can get yourself known in a niche market. You excel so much faster than a saturated market. Okay. So certificate advantages. We we briefly discussed these. Uh, you know, a certificate program will help provide proof of competency. Uh, one of the major reasons why a lot of uh, these organizations are starting certificate programs is because to get funding from even a large corporation, they expect you to bring back a certificate or something showing that they didn't just waste their money on you when you went to this training. And I mean that's pretty. Um, that, that's just pr I, I, maybe I'll call it. That's pretty blunt, but that's just how it is, right? So they want a measure of to see whether you got anything out of that course. So and, and so that's what we have found anyway. So we're like, look, more certificate programs to help build the training, to get people in seats, to get them trained because we this industry is. Is rapidly growing, and we need more people like yourself to get trained to become experts, so we can help spread the word, and we can stop having these unnecessary catastrophes with plants blowing up, you know, oil rigs destroying. We want people with safety in mind, and you know that's our goal. All right, uh, some other points: uh, difference yourself from your competitors. You know, you have you can also insert exit FSP or exit ACS. Uh, after your signature, so it's kind of fun to do as well. Here's some questions. You know, because uh, one of the webinars we had, people like, well, I don't even know what to expect. What kind of questions should I see? Well, you know, if you're new to this, this question is actually kind of hard. But if you've if you've taken a course or two, you know, this 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 question here becomes kind of a no-brainer. I'm going to read it. It's going to be a pressure transmitter has a systematic capability rating of SIL three, right? Safety integrity level. Uh, therefore. A, this transmitter can only be used in a, a, a this transmitter can be used in any cell level. Transmitters are excluded from systematic capability evolution. Field instruments are excluded from system uh, systematic capability evaluations. This device may be used in a cell one, cell two, or cell three SIF design. This transmitter may be used in any SIF related below cell three. What do you think it is? Well, the answer is D, right? So it can be used in a SIL 1, 2, or 3 SIF design. The reason why A it cannot be used uh, is because there's something out there that's called a SIL 4. Uh, I do not recommend it. That's a whole other webinar in itself. The transmitter, uh, you cannot exclude systematic capability evaluation at any level, at the transmitter level, level at the field instruments level. Uh, you're always going to need to get it reevaluated. And uh, there's also a random capability side. Uh, that needs to be checked as well. And then E is not correct because why? Uh, SIL 3, it can be used at, even if it's rated at SIL 3, it can be used at SIL 3. So, and E says that it's anything under SIL 3. So, next question, a little bit harder, uh, but something that you would definitely understand if you were to take a training course uh, for an exam. Uh, so, in order to reduce dangerous stiction failures in a spool, uh, type solenoid valve. Automatic stroke testing is designed at a test rate of what? All right, so the thing you need to think about is, okay, stiction. We're talking about stiction here. When does stiction come into play with a valve? Well, the answer is actually, uh, well, you know, you could say every two months, every month, every week, uh, every six months, every year, right? Well, if you don't really know, it's actually, you're going to have to do it for C once per week. Uh, and I did put a link down, well not a link, but I at least told you uh, the white paper where that is located. In it. But it's basically, we'll just say, we'll benchmark it and say it's every 200 hours, uh, stiction comes into play. Now, for some of you that don't know what stiction is, let's think of it like this. 
uh, you come in in the morning, you grab your coffee, you do some water cooler talk. Uh, you know, you, you guys are just having a good time. You get back in, you put your coffee down, you start uh, going through emails. Next thing you know, you get a call. You got to run home, and you don't come back to the next day. Well, you come back the next day, uh, and your coffee's still sitting there. You pick it up, and it's stuck a little bit. You're like, yeah, that was weird. You know, now you got to clean it up because it's a little sticky. There's a little residue there. However it happens, who knows? You pick it up, you clean it up, you get a new coffee. That stick is called stiction in the in our world, right? So a valve does the same thing. If it's not used and it stays there for 200 hours or greater, it already starts to stick, right? So some people are like, well, look, it's automatic stroke testing. You know, I don't want to do this every week. Well, what some people do around that is they build a stronger system to overpower any type of stiction. So if they over if they if they overpower and have a bigger system, they never really have to worry about stiction because that valve is that strong. But for this sake, statistically, uh, in in a mechanical type of world, stiction happens every 200 hours. It only increases and gets worse from there. So you want to run some type of test to keep it clean. Long answer for a, a quick question. Sorry about that. Advantages for certification. In becoming a CFSC, CFSP, CACE, CACS, lots of the letters, I have put them in front of you so that you don't have to try and memorize anything. This is where we call it the gold standard. This is when you're that mentor. This is when you're that leader in the industry. This is when we look at you and we thank you for being part of this organization that's going to help change our industry. Because right now there's a lot of things going on that people just don't think about. And becoming a CFSC or even a CFSP, you're already paving the way to help put new changes in place that are going to make these industries a lot safer and save a, a lot of lives. And, you know, and, and of course, if you think about yourself and you have goals for yourself in 2017, you know, this is going to differentiate, differentiate yourself from your competitors and your employees. It will differentiate yourself from your competitors. Why? Because you now can be a company, whether you be an end user or whether you be a manufacturer or whatever, you can now state when you go and try and market and sell something that you have certified functional safety experts within your organization and you can even be purchasing or making SIL rated products. Okay, and, but, the, but the thing with the SIL rated products is that's great, but who's making those products? Are those people trained to help you uh, maintain that credibility, right? And so that's the missing piece for the company. And as yourself, of course, it's going to help you succeed as well. Different programs that are out there, whether you want to do it on automotive, machinery, process safety, safe, uh, hardware, software, cybersecurity is another big one that's, that's growing extremely fast. And uh, I, I would even say um, even by next year, 2018, you might even see uh, a certification for fire and gas because that's another industry that's growing extremely fast. References. Yes, yes, yes. I know I see a few of you on here right now. You're going to ask me about the cybersecurity study guide. Yes, uh, it will be heading to the printers next week. We're extremely excited. Uh, this study guide has gone all over the world. We're on revision like 16 of the draft. Uh, it's only getting better and better and better, but we finally have it all tied up. We're fixing some tables that will be coming out. Uh, I know there's 10 of you here that are dying for this study guide for cybersecurity. It is coming, I promise. <laughs> uh, but we do have a study guide uh, for the process industry for CFSC or CFSP. Uh, there's online trainings. And uh, I personally put on here that if you do and you are thinking about becoming that mentor or that leader in, our, in this organization, uh, in this field, I do recommend if you do take the training, even if you don't take the training, I recommend you study for three months. You know, maybe if you do this every single day, you don't really need to study as much. But I always tell people if I need a benchmark essay, study for three months. You know, you're not going to be studying nonstop for three months, but at least give yourself some time to look through the sections, familiarize yourself with the different standards, whether it's 61508, 61511, 26262. You know, whatever industry that you are uh, trying to achieve your certification in, and then go take the exam. Too many people will take that training and immediately say, I'm good to go. Even if they don't do well on their FSP exam, they'll go ahead and take the CFSC anyways or CFSC, and then they'll wonder why they had, they had some issues. <laughs>
Now this is uh, the time that we're going to bring up some questions. I do have some questions here, uh, and I will go ahead and start answering them. The first one I have, um, referee statements. Okay, it says uh, if I've sent out some referee statements and I haven't received them back, how do I get them so that I can complete my application and get my exam results? Good question. Uh, keep in mind that you can. You don't if if you if you're CFSP it's two referees right if you're CFSE it's four referees. But that's not saying you're limited to those numbers. So if you send it to maybe your boss or somebody else that travels a lot, you may not get those back for a while. So what I recommend you do is send it out to five, six, seven people. Now, <laughs> don't waste people's time by giving to all these people and making people fill it out and you don't even need it. But if you're if you're struggling, go ahead and send it to somebody else. The people do not have to be a CFSC or CFSP uh, to be your referee, right? It could be the guy sitting next to you. All we want is people to recommend you to basically tell us that you're a good person, right, to take this exam. Good question. Next question. To date, how many active valid CFSC certification holders are there? Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Oh. Let me just ta say this. Every year, I want to say between three and 500 people pass the exam. How's that? We've been around since 2000. Uh, of course, there's going to be some dropout, but uh, I'd say there's, let's just say a few thousand. How about that? Uh, I don't know the exact number, but that'll kind of give you an idea. I think we had like between I think three and four hundred last year passed the exam, and we're just talking about CFSCs, I believe. So, or CFSC. email me if you want an exact number, but that that should give you an idea. The pass rate uh, for these exams for the CFSP, we're looking at around seventy percent, and for the CFSC, we're looking around fifty percent, and that's kind of a shocking number, but keep in mind, uh, when we first started this, people just assumed that if they took a training course like they did in other organizations, they would pass this exam, and that's not the case. You truly have to be an expert in this field to pass that exam, either exam. Um, and there, so that was a big misunderstanding, and that's why we stress this so much. We want people to study. We want you to pass, to become that leader, but we can't expect someone to become a leader after four days of training. All right. If I pass the CFSP, can I find out what areas I need to study for the CFSC or CFSP exam? Great question. Yes, uh, that's actually the whole purpose for a certificate program. Uh, well, and of course, I speak a lot about Exeter because I work for Exeter. Uh, but you can you can put this on other organizations as well. Hopefully, they run the same way. But for Exeter, if you take a CFSP, excuse me, if you take the FSP, right, the certificate program, at the end, it's graded right then and there after that training, so you know instantly how well you did, and then the instructor is still there, so now you can ask questions on the questions that you've missed, and you can start seeing the areas that you are great in, which ones you weren't so great in, and the areas that you really need to study. So that's the purpose for us, anyways, for certificate programs, is one we want you to pass, right? I think that pass rate is between 80 and 90%. It's a great pass rate. Uh, because it should be. It's based off of training material. That's where those numbers should be falling. Uh, but yeah, so take that for what it's worth. If you do really well, you excel at it, then go ahead. Take the next step. If you don't, maybe you should take a little bit of time and, and study a little bit more. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. When is when is the study guide coming out? Should not should I not get a certification and or training in network? architecture first if so please tell me how and thanks good question so the CACE study guide is coming out well if it goes to the printer next week I would say we will most likely make it available for purchased first or second week of February you should have them in your let, let's just say mid to let me just say mid to late February if you get it sooner get excited <laughs> But uh, it is going to the printer. If I if there's no delays with the printer, then they will be ready, let's just say, mid-February, which is very exciting. How much is the online training? Uh, another good question. And you know what? Maybe we will create a certificate program for that. I don't even know if that's created for the network architecture uh, cybersecurity part. 
But if you don't mind, uh, please send me an email, and I will get you all that information. Uh, one of my colleagues, Jatana, she has all the prices, and I will link her up with you so that you can ask those questions and get your answers right away. So thank you so much for that question. Next question. If I'm a CFA, C, an, if I'm an FS, if I'm an FS Eng, what program am I? Uh, FS Eng. Oh, right. Let me go back. FS Eng. Boom. Oh, look at that. Popped up. So if you're an FS Eng, if you look, uh, that one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that is a TUV Rhineland FS Eng. That is a certificate program. So that's. Uh, so that basically meant you were required to take an exam, or you were required to take a training, you, and and you did well. Congratulations, and you passed. And so now you're an FS Eng. Uh, a lot of these organizations will put time restraints, right? Which is good because they don't want just someone off the street to walk in. So some of these programs you need 10 years of experience or uh, five years of experience, whatever that may be. But truly, it's a certificate program, so they're basically just letting you know, hey, we want experienced people to take our training courses. Um, we don't want someone from the street, so it's easy, you know, because then it, then your trainings go a little more smoothly if you have somebody in there with experience. You can talk about deeper subjects, but it's a certificate program, yeah. Okay, that was all of our questions, everybody. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, if you think of some more, uh, oh, I also threw on here, uh, if there, there are some trainings coming up, I know the industrial control systems, lifecycle, the networking one, those are here at the uh, corporate office. If you ever get a chance to come to the corporate office, it is awesome. Uh, we have a lot of fun here, and uh, we do have a functional safety course that's going to be online, which is new. Uh, this way, we had a lot of people asking us to do this because of uh, travel budgets. Well, now, there will be no more travel budgets. If you want information on this, send me an e actually. Uh, Send her an email. Send Jatana an email. <laughs> uh, you can do it to this one, uh, and, and she will get the the email. So we appreciate it. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Take care for now. Bye-bye.